Section 6 of Police Operation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Police Operation by H. Beam Piper. Section 6. A blue light flashed over one of the booths across the room. Verkan Vall got to his feet, removing his coat and hanging it on the back of his chair, and crossed the room, rolling up his left shirt sleeve. There was a relaxer chair in the booth, with a blue plastic helmet above it. He glanced at the indicator screen to make sure he was getting the indoctrination he called for, and then sat down in the chair and lowered the helmet over his head, inserting the earplugs and fastening the chin strap. Then he touched his left arm with an injector which was on the arm of the chair, and at the same time flipped the starter switch. Soft, slow music began to chant out of the earphones. The insidious fingers of the drug blocked off his senses, one by one. The music diminished, and the words of the hypnotic formula lulled him to sleep. He woke, hearing the lively strains of dance music. For a while he lay relaxed, then he snapped off the switch, took out the earplugs, removed the helmet, and rose to his feet. Deep in his subconscious mind was the entire body of knowledge about the Venusian nighthound. He mentally pronounced the word, and at once it began flooding into his conscious mind. He knew the animal's evolutionary history, its anatomy, its characteristics, its dietary and reproductive habits, how it hunted, how it fought its enemies, how it eluded pursuit, and how best it could be tracked down and killed. He nodded. Already, a plan for dealing with Gavrin Sarn's renegade pet was taking shape in his mind. He picked a plastic cup from the dispenser, filled it from a cooler tap with amber-colored spiced wine, and drank, tossing the cup into the disposal bin. He placed a fresh injector on the arm of the chair, ready for the next user of the booth. Then he emerged, glancing at his fourth-level wristwatch, and mentally translating to the first-level time scale. Three hours had passed. There had been more to learn about his quarry than he had expected. Tortha Karf was sitting behind his desk, smoking a cigarette. It seemed as though he had not moved since Firkin Val had left him, though the special agent knew that he had dined, attended several conferences, and done many other things. I checked up on your hitchhiker, Val, the chief said. We won't bother about him. He's a member of something called the Christian Avengers, one of those typical Europo-American race and religious hate groups. He belongs in a belt that is the outcome of the Hitler victory of 1940, whatever that was. Something unpleasant, I dare say. We don't owe him anything. People of that sort should be stepped on, like cockroaches. And he won't make any more trouble on the line where you dropped him than they have there already. It's in a belt of complete social and political anarchy. Somebody probably shot him as soon as he emerged, because he wasn't wearing the right sort of uniform. 1940 what, by the way? Elapsed years since the birth of some religious leader, Verkin Vell explained. And did you find out about my rifle? Oh yes, it's reproduction of something that's called the Sharps Model 37.235 Ultra Speed Express, made on an adjoining part-time belt by a company that went out of business 67 years ago, elapsed time on your line of operation. What made the difference was the second war between the states. I don't know what that was, either. I'm not too well up on fourth-level history, but whatever your line of operation didn't have it. Probably just as well for them, though they very likely had something else, as bad or worse. I put in a complaint to supplies about it, and got you some more ammunition and reloading tools. Now, tell me what you're going to do about this nighthound business. Tortha Karf was silent for a while, after Virgen Val had finished. You're taking some awful chances, Val, he said at length. The way you plan doing it, the advantages will all be with the nighthound. Those things can see as well at night as you can in daylight. I suppose you know that, though. You're the nighthound specialist now. Yes, but they're accustomed to the Venus Hotland marshes. It's been dry weather for the last two weeks, all over the northeastern section of the northern continent. I'll be able to hear it long before it gets close to me, and I'll be wearing an electric headlamp. When I snap that on, it'll be dazzled for a moment. Well, as I said, you're the nighthound specialist. There's the communicator. Order anything you need. He lit a fresh cigarette from the end of the old one before crushing it out. But be careful, Val. It took me close to forty years to make a paratimer out of you. I don't want to have to repeat the process with somebody else before I can retire. End of section 6